Chase Bank sucks. I'll see you in the next one. I'm kidding, but it's not great. So today I wanna to help you decide whether or not Chase Bank is still worth it in 2022 and what some better alternatives might be if you're ready to break up with Chase. All right, let's jump right into it. What is going on everyone? I hope you are all having a fantastic day. So in all seriousness, I do want to give Chase Bank a fair shot in today's video since they are the highest valued bank on the planet. Clearly they're doing something right, so let's run through all of the account features and ultimately help you decide if it is still worth it in 2022. So starting on the checking side of things, we have eight different account options, which I know sounds ridiculous, but for a majority of consumers, you'll be looking at the everyday checking account and that consists of the Chase Total Checking, Chase Secure Banking, and Chase Premium Plus Checking. These are all largely the same with only a few differences on the ATM fees and the check designs that you're able to get, but for 99% of consumers, the Chase Total Checking Accounts is going to be your best option. With this, you have access to their network of over 16,000 free-to-use ATMs and 4,700 physical brick-and-mortar locations. And they also now have their Chase deposit-friendly ATMs, where not only can you withdraw cash, but you can actually deposit cash into your account at an ATM, which I think is pretty cool. Now, there's no minimum deposit requirements in order to open this account. However, the first red flag that we run into here is the $12 monthly service fee that applies to this account unless you jump through some hoops in order to get it waived. Now, truthfully, getting that monthly fee waived is not that difficult, and you either have to have $500 of direct deposits each month, a daily balance of $1,500 or more, or an average daily balance of $5,000 thousand dollars or more across all of your linked Chase accounts. So if you're using this as your main banking platform, then more than likely you'll have $1,500 in this account. But I think we can all agree that if you don't meet one of those requirements, you absolutely should not open this account because paying a $12 monthly fee, if you've only got a thousand bucks in here, is absolutely ridiculous, and there are way better options on the market that cost nothing. With this account, you obviously have access to a number of online features as well, including Chase Quick Deposit, their online bill payment features, their partnership with Zelle that allows you to send money to pretty much any US bank accounts, and most of the basic features that you would come to expect from your average bank account. Now, like I said, there's also two premium versions of the checking accounts called Chase Sapphire Banking and Chase Private Client checking, which both also have monthly fees of $25 and $35 respectively that you can likely get waived. And these premium accounts do come with some higher transfer limits, dedicated customer service, and a few other bells and whistles that the everyday checking account does not have, like no fee ATM withdrawals worldwide. Again though, I wouldn't bother with these accounts unless you are able to get that monthly fee waived, which in the case of the Chase Sapphire banking accounts, you need $75,000 dollars or more in this account in order to get that fee waived. And lastly, on the checking side of things, we have perhaps the best account options of the entire Chase banking platform, and that would be the Chase First Banking, Chase High School Checking, and Chase College Checking, which obviously are all accounts that are geared towards specific age groups, starting from six years old, going all the way up to college students at 24 years old. These accounts have similar features to what we just talked about, but come with tools for parents, like the ability to set recurring allowance and assign chores, limited overdraft protection, auto save tools, and some other features that I honestly wish the regular everyday checking accounts had. All right, we'll come back to the checking accounts at the end of the video, but we've still got a lot to cover, so let's move on to the Chase savings accounts. Similar to the checking account, there is a standard and premium version of the savings accounts, but thankfully fewer options to choose from since we just have the Chase savings and Chase premium savings. Again, both of these accounts come with the same basic features, but the premium version does come with better customer service and supposedly better interest rates, but that brings us to the 
biggest red flag across the entire Chase banking platform. I'll preface this by saying that in my opinion, interest rates aren't that important on a bank account because if you're really that concerned about getting as much return as possible on your money, then you'll probably be investing that money instead and earning way more each year than any bank account could offer. However, I know that for me, despite the fact that I have a majority of my net worth invested in the stock market, I still keep a lot of cash on the sidelines and I also have my emergency fund on the sidelines and it's nice to earn a little bit of interest on that money. But unfortunately, Chase offers just 0.01% APY and even with the premium savings accounts, which they claim offers premier relationship rates, it still only pays you 0.02%. And to put that in perspective, the bank account that I currently use is paying me 2% APY at the time of recording this video, which is 200 times more than what Chase is currently paying. And to add insult to injury, if you do have to pay that monthly service fee for whatever reason, it's probably going to be several years worth of your interest. Plus they charge some random $5 savings withdrawal limit fee, and worst of all, a $34 insufficient funds fee. So not only do you have to pay to open this account, jump through a bunch of hoops in order to get that monthly fee waived, but even if you do all of that, they're still going to pay you next to nothing in interest, charge you ridiculous fees if you withdraw from this account too many times, and charge you a huge fee if you accidentally overdraft on the account. I understand that all of these things were common in the banking world like 20 years ago, but with so so many better options on the market, I just can't understand why Chase refuses to adapt to the modern no-fee, high-yield banking model that the entire industry is moving towards. Obviously, they have a ton of financial tools across the board, and JP Morgan Chase, again, is the highest valued bank on the planet, so they're clearly doing something right. But if they continue on this path, it would not surprise me if in my lifetime, we see some of these popular online financial technology companies take a huge market share away from Chase, if not pass them entirely. All right, stepping off my soapbox for a second, the good news is that the Chase mobile app is actually pretty decent, and while it's not gonna win any awards for design, you are able to not only track and view your Chase banking tools from this app, but also your investment accounts, your Chase credit cards, and any app that allows you to view multiple financial accounts and tools under one platform is going to be a positive for me. One other positive is that Chase does have a ton of CD options, but once again, that positive is quickly squandered by the fact that even with a 10-year CD at relationship rates, it pays just 0.05%, and that's only if you have $10,000 or more in that CD. Again, to put that in perspective, Charles Schwab has a one-year CD right now, paying 3.2% at the time of recording this video, with no minimum deposit requirements or any loopholes to jump through. So at the 0.02% rate that most of these CDs from Chase currently pay, it would take you about 160 years in a Chase CD to match just one year in that Charles Schwab CD. Okay, so what is the silver lining in all of this? Because obviously things are not looking that great for Chase. Well, honestly, this account only makes sense to me if you either do not care about the rates that you earn on your money, which is totally understandable, or if you want to have a vast network of physical banks that you can go into anytime. But the fact is, having giant fancy buildings in New York and San Francisco is really expensive and someone has to pay for that and unfortunately that someone is you in the form of foregone interest rates. The reason SoFi is able to offer 2% APY is because they don't have any giant buildings to maintain in some of the most expensive cities in the country, and a lot of those savings then get passed on to the customers as a result. Now, I will admit that Chase does have some of the best youth account options for teenagers and college students, and I like the fact that those products are specifically focused on that age group. You all also know that Chase offers some of my favorite credit card products that are on the market, and while that has absolutely nothing to do with banking, if you do have a number of Chase credit cards yourself that you frequently use, then having a Chase bank account might make sense if you want to have everything under one application. But if you're just looking for that hybrid banking model that still offers a brick-and-mortar location and has some more modern features, 
then personally, I feel that Capital One has seen the writing on the wall and has rapidly adapted to the changing banking world as a result. But as per usual, this is all just my opinion. And I did truly wanna give Chase a fair shot and I hope I achieve that in today's video, but there's just some major red flags, which is why I feel it's time for all of us to break up with Chase. I'd love to know what you think of Chase Bank down in the comment section below and whether or not you think it is still worth it in 2022. As always, be sure to check out some of my favorite financial tools using those links down below the like button, many of which will give you some free cash when you sign up, which we always love. Thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it so much. Take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.